How's it going everybody? Josh KI6NAZ, thanks for clicking on the Ham Radio Crash Course. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at the Chameleon Lightweight End Fed Sloper, or the LEFS antenna. So this will get you through 40 uh, up to 10 meters, the HF bands primarily. It's a sloper design, meaning that there is a card here uh, with some paracord that it ships with. You throw that about 25 feet up into a tree, and then you come down at kind of a sloping angle. Primarily because there's a bit of coiled wire that you can't really fish that through a tree. So it's primarily done as a sloper. That's that's its design anyway. At least that's what I can figure out from just looking at it. So let's open up the package and get it up in this tree behind me. All right, so let's take a look at what you get in the package. Pretty simple, nothing, nothing too complicated. Ooh, it's stapled and then also sealed. Remember, always carry always carry your utility knife with you guys. All right, so here's our line hoist, whatever. And I've got a 12 ounce weaver weight. Let's use the throw line. I'm gonna use my weaver throw, li throw line here. You may be asking or thinking to yourself, why don't you just use uh, the paracord that it comes with? Well. This stuff is designed to go through trees very easily. And I've had very little issue using this. I have had problems with paracord and other cordage. So um, pretty simple. We're just gonna fire this up 25 feet or so. It doesn't need to be very compelling. Um, I'm actually gonna give it a little more space here. That's it. So now we take our paracord and we're gonna connect it to the left. All right, normally you do something fancy like a sheet bend. You don't need to be that fancy. Pretty dumb, just two knots. This is way more than 25 feet because you gotta go up and over the tree. But I think we're gonna have some left over that I may snip off and I'll use to hold the other end of the line. Don't forget when you start hoisting, you likely need your coax connected, okay? So don't hoist this all the way up and then realize I forgot my coax which happens a lot, actually. <laughs> All right, back to the hoisting. The problems with the trees here is that there are lots of branches. That's not bad. Would you call that 25 feet? Let's even go a little higher. There we go, that's about it. I'm gonna disconnect my tow line. This is nice wire, although be careful. Make sure you use the wire winder because it's going to uh, it's going to get kinked and coiled. In fact, that's what's happening right now. Got some little bit of memory to it. So I'm kind of overhanding, underhanding the coil so that as we go, I can just kind of strip it off. Okay, let's see if I can show you. Here's the here's my hand running along the wire, and it's away now. It's going up and then up the tree about 25 feet. So. We're gonna get some envis action with this, um, but it kind of goes more vertical there for the last five feet or so. Ideally, if you look at these trees, all these little limbs that are coming off of it, if you found a tree that was bare most of the way up or just had a little crotch at the top, throw through that and hoist with that. You're gonna have a better time. All the trees are out here like that though, so you just have to make do. Here's my weaver throw box. My line for throwing and my bag. The weight lives in this little hole right there. Okay, time for the 7300. Fair bit of noise. Look at that, I got an S6 noise floor here. We're outside. <laughs> what the hell? Oh man. Change plans. Let's, uh, let's never speak about that plan again. I'm gonna use this tree, which is arguably a worse tree, but it's got a straight shot way out there up the mountain, <laughs> which is a better alignment for the antenna anyway, and it gets us away from these houses. Because for some reason, there's a lot of noise out here. So uh, who knew? So we're gonna rethrow. Walking you through the process, guys. Sometimes it's not easy. You gotta, you gotta do the right thing for your antenna. It'll pay dividends uh, when you're at, when you're activating. 
or operating or whatever you're planning on doing. Take the time, set the antenna up right. Also make sure your throw line isn't also knotted. That's a, apparently the name of the game this weekend is knotted throw line. You know, you can throw it backwards too. That's another way you can do this. Grab your, get out of the way. There we go. And just no look throw. <laughs> What's that about? Oh my God. How far did that go? <laughs> I went over. There we go. That wasn't great. We're going to do that again. Also, fun story. I was uh, trying to make that last arrangement work and I was walking backwards away from the antenna. I'd never walk backwards uh, when you're outside. Tripped over a cinder block and uh, I overextended my ankle pretty significantly. I don't think I sprained it, but we're, we're pretty close to sprain town. We'll see how it's, it doesn't feel like it's swelling. It actually feels pretty good right now, but you know, we'll see. Get some ice on it in a second. Once I get this antenna up, then I can relax a little bit. Nope, I did it again. That should be okay though. Let me see. Oh, that could work out really well actually. Okay. Okay, hoisting up the cordage again. Again, I'm backing up without looking. I'm gonna kill myself. All right, so here was uh, my ultimate setup. I didn't have it very high off the ground, you can see. Just running to the ground here. But what I did have, which has kind of worked out for me, is coming off of the left box there, or the little control wire winder toroid coil thing. Going along the antenna wire, you can see the little coil about mm, closer to the coil for the uh, Anon. I think that might be, I have a hunch that that's a trap, not just a loading coil, but I could be wrong. And then it runs all the way up to a tree there, which is towards the, I'm not going to call this a peak, but it's a little hill. Um, and I'll, I'll walk up here so you can see it. This actually worked really, really well. This is a north-south alignment for the wire. And yeah, I just got it up into this tree back here. There is a nice little insulator, wire insulator, which makes setting it up really easy. So that's about 63 feet leading back down to the control box. So just keep that in mind. You need about 63 feet of run to make this work and it's it does well pretty impressed let's talk performance this is 40 meter coverage this was during my live stream so an hour beforehand during testing an hour during the live stream and here is when you had 20 over the top of 40 the yellow is all the contacts or the people hearing me on 20 meters ft8 blue is 40 meters made a ton of contacts good DX, and for reference, here is JSA Call. This was fantastic. A really good performer at 100 watts. It can go up to 250 for single sideband and 500 for CW Morse code. All right, so what do I think of the lefts? Not bad. Uh, this is about $175, dollars on the Chameleon website. Uh, this is a wire winding card that has your 49 to 1 un, -un and it is a 49 to 1 un, -un connected directly via zip ties and it looks like it has some kind of coating an enamel coating that's put on it there's two sides of the winder one of the larger sizes for the wire and the shorter side or the narrower shallower side is for the the line that it comes with and it does come with some thin uh, paracord almost like dacron type line anti-static line that we would use for hanging antennas i just pulled this down so i'm just winding it right here i'm just going over in a figure eight style I didn't need to use the antenna um, tuner that's on the 7300, but if your radio does come equipped with the, the you know three to one standard tuner, you're probably going to want to use that. You don't need to though, and they argue that you're going to get two to one SWR and lower across all the bands. Now. The reason it's called a LEFS is because this is specifically designed to be a sloper. And again, I'll splash in an image here. There is a coil. I don't know what the coil's purpose is. I have a feeling it is a trap. Uh, it's probably also a loading coil to some extent or, you know, combination of both. I will check with the folks at Chameleon and find out what the story is with this coil here. 
because there's not that much wire there. There's about six turns of wire around this. So I, I finished wrapping it. I'm gonna throw, I threw a couple of loops around the outside and I'm just gonna go through here and then I'm gonna tie it off uh, so that I can, I can use it in the future. And that should hold it pretty nicely. In fact, it's uh, got its tow line connected in here. That makes it pretty easy to be able to set up uh, and just go in the future. The downside, and this is the, the point where I will mention that um, the lefts aspect of it, which the lefts is again, that sloper capability. Since you can't drag this PVC pipe, this loading coil up through the tree up and over, you're gonna have to hang the matching unit up in the tree, hoist it up via the, the tow line, this you know um, cord and then connect that way. So if you're running it that way, that means you're gonna have to have this hanging from the tree, which means you're gonna have to have an appreciable amount of coax to get down from the tree and then to wherever you're operating from. Keep that in mind as you are setting up your gear that you're gonna take into the field. All in all, it's, it is a functioning NFED antenna. It works very well. I was able to use it on uh, 15, 20, and 40. So you get 40, 20, 15, 12, 10. Uh, so that's going to be good for, for most operators out there in the field, at least for you know whatever it is you want to do. Take a look at it. The links will be in the description. I argue that the, um, the NVET is popular now because it is getting picked up by people that like to run portable ham radio. And that is a perfectly good antenna for getting out and doing portable. Anyway, I'm Josh, KI6NAZ. You've been watching the Ham Radio Crash Course. Check the links in the description and check out the antenna. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this. Consider subscribing because I live stream every Saturday at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time and every other week, Wednesdays, 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time for Ham Nation. There's people yelling in the background, so I'm going to wrap it up. Happy Father's Day. Uh, you, I don't know when you're going to see this, but happy Father's Day again to anybody that's a father. And that's it. Take it easy. See ya.